Pablo Escobar, the man, the myth, the legend. A man who at his peak controlled 80% of the cocaine sold in the United States, earning him the name the King of Cocaine and ranking him as Forbes' seventh richest man in the world. He was the father of two children, Juan and Manuela Escobar, married to Maria Victoria Hinao. Though if the constant rumors are to be believed, he had numerous mistresses, which put a strain on his marriage. His crimes, though, were far beyond just infidelity. As his wealth and power expanded, he got involved in all sorts of heinous acts. Murders and assassinations were a common affair. He was even powerful enough to have connections in the Colombian government. On December 2nd, 1993, Escobar was shot and killed in a police shootout between Escobar and a highly elite police force created specifically to bring him down. After his demise, Escobar left a lot of things behind. His drug empire, his properties, and most importantly, his family. Over 20 years after his death, we're here to find out exactly what happened to Pablo Escobar's family after his demise. His wife, Maria Victoria Henao Vallejo, was born in 1961. She met Pablo Escobar when she was just 13, and at the time, she was sure she had met the love of her life. And after 17 complicated years of marriage, through the drug trafficking, violence, and potential infidelity with numerous women, Maria still maintains that he was, in fact, the love of her life. She still fondly recalls happy moments spent with Escobar. Conocer a Disney siempre es un sueño de cualquier ser humano. El papá se volvía un niño en ese parque con Sebas. Se subía a todas las montañas rusas así, se muriera del pánico porque no le gustaban las montañas rusas, pero igual todo lo que fuera posible para ver a Seba feliz. Things weren't always smooth sails and family vacations. They got complicated when she found out the true nature of her husband's work and wasn't very interested in being his partner in crime. But her passion for him burned hot enough to start a life with him on the fringes of the law. After Escobar's death, it wasn't very difficult for her to give up the incredibly lucrative position of head of the Escobar drug empire, opting instead for a peaceful life with the rest of her family. Maria later fled her home country with her two children. But even that wasn't easy. She was reportedly refused asylum, initially attempting to flee to Mozambique, Brazil, and Germany before finally being accepted in Argentina as a tourist. She then changed her name from Maria Victoria Henao Vallejo to Maria Isabel Santos Caballero, which allowed her and her family to live in peace for a few years, until 1999. The authorities found out that Maria Isabel Santos was in fact Maria Victoria Henao, the wife of the famous Pablo Escobar, which led to their arrest on the grounds of money laundering in the year 2000. She and her son, Juan Pablo, were imprisoned for many months. After her arrest, Maria made a statement, I am being imprisoned in Argentina for being Colombian, because they want to judge the ghost of Pablo Escobar, and because they want to make people believe that Argentina is fighting drug trafficking. Eventually, the authorities were unable to link her to any illegal affairs, so they were released, and realized the whole guilty before proven innocent approach maybe wasn't the best way to go about this. Afterwards, she kept out of the spotlight for almost two decades, breaking her silence to release a book, Mrs. Escobar, My Life with Pablo, shedding a light on the personalities of both her and her famous husband. She still lives a quiet life with her children and grandchildren in Buenos Aires, Argentina, his son. I remember him giving me a lot of love, uh, being uh, at home with me and my family. Uh, he was a very good man with me. I received a lot of love from him. Uh, that's what I remember. I also remember when we went to see uh, the poor villages in Colombia uh, to help them. And that's the father that I knew uh, at the beginning. Juan Pablo Escobar, born in 1977, he eventually changed his name, just like his mother, to Sebastián Marroquín upon arrival in Argentina. He is now an architect, designer, lecturer and author and has been very vocal about his father rendering the name change a little moot. I'd go ahead and say he probably even regrets the change, seeing as how he designed a clothing line and gave it the name Escobar Henao, a combination of his father's surname and his mother's maiden name. The Escobar Henao clothing line even features Pablo Escobar's face printed on organic fabric, jeans and t-shirts alike. The venture, according to him, is aimed at changing the history and view of the family to something more positive and peaceful. Sebastian has always been outspoken on matters relating to his father and family. 
He took exception to a Forbes article, which pegged his family's fortune at $3 billion, stating that it caused immeasurable damage to his family. That article led to the blackmailing and kidnapping of multiple relatives, including himself, who escaped more than nine kidnapping attempts. He also spoke on the Netflix show Narcos, which was written based on his father's life and affairs as the drug lord Kingpin stating that facts on the show were both falsified and misrepresented because it glorified his father's horrible reign over Colombia. Most of all, Sebastian wanted the public to know that despite the money, power, and charity, Pablo Escobar was responsible for the death of thousands of people, and he devastated the lives of millions of families, and that wasn't something to look up to. In 2014, Sebastian released a book titled Pablo Escobar, My Father, which detailed the softer, private side of Pablo Escobar's life. He also helped create a documentary titled The Sins of My Father. The message of the film was that the Escobar violence ended in the previous generation, as opposed to the popular belief that Juan Pablo was going to return to avenge the death of his father, like this was the sequel to an action flick. Sebastian was seen visiting the families affected by his father's killing and assassination, apologizing for those crimes. In an interview, Sebastian was asked why he had not returned to his home country after so many years on the run. He said to them, Well, I have to wait until 14 years since my father's death to say goodbye to him because, uh, I, because of the threats. You know, everybody was telling me, if you ever came back, we will kill you. So I had to stay in Argentina. I don't have uh, the option of uh, returning to Colombia. That's not an option for me. Sebastián Marroquín continues to speak openly about his father, not to polish up his myth, but to pursue peace and reconciliation by openly asking for forgiveness on behalf of his father, his daughter. Manuela Escobar was the embodiment of daddy's girl when her father was still alive. It was known that he would do anything for his princess. On one occasion, he asked his men to staple horns and wings to a white horse rather than refuse his daughter's request for a unicorn. When he was serving time in the prison he built for himself, he had a playhouse built for Manuela so that she would be closer to him. Unfortunately, just like the rest of the Escobar clan, she went through a major traumatic change in life when Escobar died, except she was only nine years old. And just like the rest of her family, she also changed her name when they settled in Argentina. She was now Juana Manuela Marroquín Santos. Life after her father's death was quite a drastic change, to say the least. She went from the daughter of a drug kingpin, able to literally burn money for warmth, to barely being a member of the middle class. She was able to attend public school, like any normal child, and even though her life had become more stable after moving to Argentina, she felt anything but safe. It certainly didn't help when her mother and brother were arrested for money laundering, although she was pardoned for being a minor. Even though she has not been accused or even associated with any crime in her entire life, she still lives in constant fear of being hunted down or losing her family because of the crimes of her father. This has led to her living the most reclusive life, especially compared to her mother and brother, choosing to shy away from the media and distance herself from her family's past. There's very little information out there about Manuela. We do know that she got a degree in public relations, as ironic as that is. It is also rumored that she might have a son, although that information is just that, rumors. Her media silence is ultimately for her own good, with the mounting paranoia and fear of being hunted or losing her family, she was reported to have attempted suicide and had fallen into bouts of depression multiple times. In an interview with Sebastian, he says that she is receiving psychological treatment, his sister and his mother. Yo sé que mi hijo no era tan malo como lo pintaban. Yo sé que a él le atribuían todo lo malo que sucediera. Yo quiero que recuerden lo bueno que hizo porque él no hizo lo malo que dicen. Él hizo canchas, hizo un barrio para los pobres. En eso no se han fijado nunca como hijo. Mejor dicho, no vuelve a nacer nadie en el mundo. Pablo Escobar's mother was named Hermilda de los Dolores Caviria. She was an ardent supporter of her son until the day she died at the age of 89. 13 years after her son's death, in the same community of Medellin where her son was killed. Not too much is known about Hermilda. We do know that even though her son controlled the largest cocaine trade in the world and he was responsible for the deaths of thousands of people, she always refused to see him as a criminal. Pablo's sister, Luz Maria Escobar, might not be doing the interview circuit or writing many books, but she has been attempting to make amends for her brother's actions after his death. She leaves letters at the graves of his victims and says that, every day, she thinks about the sadness that her brother spread 
and is saddened to see his ventures leave a painful scar over her family and beloved country. She sets up community support events and helps individuals with an aim of absolving herself of his ill-gotten gains. Pablo Escobar's legacy still lingers to this day, and it isn't just his family that have had to deal with it. Click on the video on the screen to find out just what happened to Pablo Escobar's deadliest hitmen.